In some ways, the second verse of James is one of the most puzzling verses in the entire Bible. How are we to consider it joy when we face difficult times? Well, it all starts with our answer to this question. Is God's way worth it? Hey, I'm Steve, and this is Looking Intently. I put out three short videos on the Bible each week, and with this video, I'm starting a new series through the book of James. If you want to be notified when a new video comes out each Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, then click the subscribe icon in the lower right, and be sure and click that bell icon when it appears. And then if you want to catch up or if you want to go back and look at the past series I just finished on the book of Philippians, you can click this tag in the upper right. Well, I always encourage you to leave a comment. It really helps me to get some feedback. But I got to thinking these first few verses are over this idea of experiencing trials, of going through difficult times. And so I'll ask you this. If you would like me to pray for you in anything you're going through, leave that in the comments. You can leave details if you want, or you can just say, please pray. And I promise I will pray for you. Well, in James chapter 1, starting at verse 2, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Well, upon first reading that or hearing that, it sounds like it's saying, Enjoy hard times. And maybe your thought's the same as mine when I first heard it. Really? No way. Well, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is that's not what it means. It would be impossible to enjoy good times. Uh, what it means is truly possible. We'll see that. The bad news is it's still not easy. It's possible, but not easy. Well, before we look at that in the next few videos, there's one thing that is clear here. It says, basically, consider it pure joy when you face hard times, you know, develop this perseverance, and it'll result in us being mature and complete. Well, it raises the question, what if I don't want to develop perseverance? <laughs> what if I don't want to be mature and complete? At least, you know, I'd like it in general, but not if it means enduring trials. I'd rather not. You know, I'd rather escape trials, avoid trials, fight against them. Let some other Christians endure them, and they can have all the perseverance and mature stuff they want. Now, me, I'll just settle for this. Well, I'm really asking when I think about it that way, is God's way worth it? You know, God's way, when we experience trials, is to face them with joy, develop perseverance. And so I'm saying, is God's way to experiencing going through trials, is it worth it? I remember years ago at a church where I preached, there was a woman going through a real difficult situation that involved several hard choices. You know, am I going to follow God's principles or not? And doing so was always difficult. And so I told her, put up a sign that says, is it worth it? as a reminder. She told me she hated that sign. And I understand it because God's way is often difficult. But the question is, the foundational one, is it worth it? That's where we need to start. Matter of fact, before we get to the how, it's not going to make any difference if we know how to consider it pure joy when we face trials, if we haven't decided if I'm going to, which really is asking the question, why? What's the why? Why should I? And if you're not familiar with the how, the why, the how, and the what relate, I encourage you, I'll put a link up here to a video I do on some growth geometry figures. And one of them is the growth pyramid, you know, how these three elements of growth relate to each other. Well, what is the why in this situation? And really, anytime we're told, you know, do this, even though it's difficult, God says to do it. Well, there's two things. First of all, our why consists of our purpose as creations of God, as creatures created by the Creator. My purpose is to bring glory to God. I talk about this in the relationship circle, which is in that same video. So again, check it out. There's my purpose as a creation, but second, there's also my commitment as a Christian. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's what Christianity is. You know, there's not a difference between being a Christian and being a disciple. It's not the advanced version of a Christian. No, every Christian is to have this level of commitment, a commitment to our purpose to bring glory to God. You know, maybe the reason you've struggled with this passage here, this principle of consider it pure joy when you face trials, Maybe the reason you've struggled with any principle, any command in the Bible, is you haven't settled this foundational question first. Am I committed to carrying out my purpose? 
That's my why. Is that settled or not? And I would ask you, you know, think about it this way. On a scale of 1 to 10, how committed am I to carrying out that purpose? To doing what God says to do, even when it's difficult, because I realize His way is worth it. You know, in general, think about on a scale of 1 to 10. In different areas of life, uh, in specific situations, maybe it varies. And do that. And then ask, okay, here's where I am. What can I do to move forward? How do I need to move forward? We are always going to be trying to build on a shaky foundation if we don't settle this question first. Is God's way worth it? So I encourage you to follow up on that yourself. And I always encourage you, read the good book like a good book.